Welcome back, it's Sunday, I'm in the back of the van again. Um, so what I wanted to do is update you on the progress and where this builds at this week, as I think last week when I showed you the van was pretty empty. So behind me, the bulkhead's now in, it's ply lined on one side and it's insulated and I've actually made this bulkhead here in two halves. So we've got the lower half, which has been bolted in to the um, aluminium tray behind it, so it can be removed, um, but it's got a really nice, solid, secure fixing there. Um, and then the upper half is made in a second section. So that's gonna be square and that allows me to scribe in around the van structure. So it gives you a really nice solid lower wall and upper wall. Um, it's been carpeted in the front, so it's got gray carpet to match the cab colors. Um, and what I've done is, um, as, a, as you would any stud wall, I've run some cabling through the wall itself to come out here and give us a nice um, plug socket and also maybe a 12 volt feed for a, a 12 volt fridge or if I want to run anything else 12 volt, this is a 25 amp cable, but it can handle maybe running a light up here or in the main cab or a camera or something like that. Um, so that's that section done. Um, it's all been insulated, so the whole roof has been done now, apart from this section here. And the reason I've left this until last is because I'm working on the bulkhead and I wanted to get that done before I finished the insulation. Like I also said, there's gonna be a wood burner just here. So I wanted to, again, uh, figure out exactly where that flue is going to be to make sure that I don't insulate near that flue. Um, back here in the corner, um, I've got the water tank. Uh, move that out of the way. So this is a Fiamma 70 litre and I've always used 25 litre drums in the last ones. They're very, very inexpensive. So if you're doing a cheap setup or you want to be able to take them out and fill up from a tap like half a mile away, not that you're going to carry 25 litres half a mile, um, but you've got the option. Um, however, this time I decided I don't want to keep pulling tanks in and out. So I've done an outside fill point and I've put in a 70 litre Fiamma tank. Now, um, I've used rift nuts into the body structure. I've used 12 mil ply and I've bolted that top and bottom. And then what I've done is I've used um, eight millimeter stud. Uh, with this kit, they send you six millimeter or thereabouts. Um, but I wasn't really happy with it. It's a really, really thin piece of bar. So I've upgraded it to some eight mil bar, put some nice washers on there, some nice nylock nuts as well. Because with the, with the kit that Fiamma send out, they don't give you nylock nuts, which means they could rattle loose. So um, I put some nylock nuts on there with some nice washers, that's secure and it's not going anywhere. And the reason, the other reason I've mounted it this close to the bulkhead is for safety. So if there were to be an accident, I don't want that traveling halfway down the van before it smashes into this wall here. So um, that's really safety as well. I wanted to get it as close to the front of the van as possible. Um, so that's why that's in that position. Then like I said, we've got the fill point there and there's just a hose that comes in. Um, and that is actually below the countertop height. So the countertop is about here. Um, I'm not sure if I pointed it out, there's a window going in there. That still hasn't arrived, unfortunately. Um, so I'm still waiting on that. And until that's here, I can't finish this section. Um, so if you've built one before, you'll know it's like a waiting game. You've got to get one set, one, one part of the van done before you move on to the next. You've got to wait for supplies and stuff like that. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, the roof fence arrived, but it's not been installed yet. Again, I'm waiting on butyl tape, so that can't go in. Um, yeah, so if we zoom out, um, I'll show you the back of the van. So moving back, um, I believe you can now see the rest of the van. So on this side, you can see that I've ply lined both of the walls, and this is for the cupboard backing. So uh, what I've done in previous builds is I've tongue grooved the entire roof which is quite stressful and lengthy and you end up going into corners that you then end up having cupboards in and you're not really looking in cupboards so this time I decided to do something a little bit different I've plied it um, back and and top uh, the top was six mil I found the six mil a little bit bendy to be honest and I wasn't not not um, not overly keen on it um, but for the for the roof it's fine but then because of its um, sort of like strength um, and ability to bend, I decided to go with nine mil on the walls. Um, and that just gives it a little bit more, it doesn't flex. So it's not going all over the place. Um, in terms of up here, how I got around this to stop it bending, as you can see, it doesn't move anymore. I just put a little bit of expanding foam in that and that just, just expands, it doesn't push it out. Um, it just expanded and it acts like a glue between the insulation board and the shelf itself. 
it gives you a little bit more insulation as well for your cupboards. So that's how I've got around that problem. Um, up here, as you can see, I'm really happy with this this time. Um, I usually put these in cupboards and stuff down below. But what I decided to do this time was have my MPPT um, uh, isolator switch for the solar panel um, and the fuse box itself in a cupboard up here that's accessible all the time. Um, and that uh, you can just see, um, it, will t it tells you on the MPPT what the lights are doing. So you can always just check check in and, and see what that's up to. Um, I don't have a display, a physical display for the MPPT. And the reason is I've bought a smart, sh um, a smart a shunt BMV712. So that's gonna sit here in the control panel and I can click that. It's gonna tell me my voltage, my remaining estimated remaining time left on the batteries. Um, so I didn't feel it necessary to have a voltmeter for the MPPT and that as well. It's just an added expense. Um, so like I said, double bolt isolator. So um, you've got negative and positive coming in from the panel. That then goes to your solar charge controller. And my solar charge controller then goes down to the bottom um, where it's fused again before it goes back into the battery. Um, yeah, and like I said, fuse box here. So you can just whip that off and these illuminate if there's any faults with your fuses. So you know which one it is. I'll sticker them up so I know which, which one's which. They're a little bit odd. Um, all of this comes from China, so and you'll often find that it's like um, they're all boat stuff. So you'll have like bilge pump and stuff like that, which isn't really relevant for vans. But you have to pick the nearest sticker and try and use that, and then you can remember what that means. So um, that's that done. I actually use um, t this is this is hardly going to have any load on it, but because of the run um, from the buzz bars at the bottom to here, I've actually used 10 millimeter cable um, to get up there. Um, that's just going to ensure that I'm not overloading the wires. So 10, um, that's up to 70 amps. Yeah, you've got 70 amps on that. Um, most of the stuff in these fuse boxes is an amp or two. Um, I mean, the lights, they're not drawing any more usually than about two to three amps. A phone charger might be two or three amps. Um, even if the water pump goes on, I'm not going over 20 amps. So that cable is more than sufficient. But to make sure it's sufficient, it's also going to be fused down at the bottom as well. So should um, this get overloaded for any reason from this fuse box, um, it's going to blow down there and make sure that that gets no power, um, just as a safety measure to make sure that that wire is never burning out. Um, what else have I got to show you? Um, yeah, so I've got the lights in the center, fan there, and we've got the wiring here for the max fan. Um, I've got some reading lights at the back, uh, down that's gonna be in this section here, that's gonna be cladded. And um, inside the cupboards themselves, um, I don't know if you can see up there in the cupboard, um, that, just here, this is gonna be, they're gonna be charge points. So they're in the cupboard. Um, and that means you can chuck phones, um, camera batteries and stuff like that inside the cupboard and let, let them charge. Um, so there's just some extra power points. Um, I'm gonna have an extra power point here, 12 volt. And then I've got some 240 volt coming out here at the top of the kitchen and 240 as well, because I'm gonna be running a household fridge again in this one, running off of the beautiful Multi Plus that we've got down here. So. The Multi Plus, um, I've explained that in another video, so if you go and check that out, difference between a Multi Plus and an inverter, or an uh, uh, inverter charger versus inverter, that's the inverter charger. I decided to treat myself on this one. Um, and then moving down here, we've got the, uh, the rest of the electrics, which are still in progress, so they're obviously not complete yet. But just here, I've got the, um, the fuse box that I was talking about, um, and this is gonna fuse the inverter charger it's also going to do the solar charge control of the fuse box the um, battery to battery charger that comes back from the engine and they've got a negative buzz bar over here um, so that's going to earth everything out um, and then below it I've got the shunt um, which runs to a it's actually yeah there you go it's connected through a little data cable that's going to end up there and that's going to show me my battery um, and then we're going to have the, the garage consumer unit here so that's going to be hooked up to that kitchen socket and also the fridge in the back um, what else has been done 
obviously this has been done, the wheel arch box, the bed frame started to go in, so this is going to be the frame for the seats. That's nice and secure. Uh, it's just some CLS. Um, I think it's four by two. I can't remember. Um, I'll put the measurement in the description below. Um, yeah, so we've got the CLS on the sides. And this week I got around to respraying some of the band, so it's like a partial respray. So it actually matches my watch and my phone. Um, but I, I'll do a shot for you to show you to show you that. Anyway, uh, if you've got any comments, questions, then please pop them in the comments below. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see or you'd like me to emphasise on it that's been shown in this video or you'd like to see something in more detail, please put it in the comments below or contact me at About A Van on Instagram and I'll try and cover that in a video um, next week or on another day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it's been helpful and have a good week.